Hey y'all, it's Jason with All Star Welding back at you with another exciting video. Today I'm going to show you how to TIG weld off the Outlaw. That's right, it can be done, but it's a little different than what you might expect. And let me start this off by mentioning something that I found out this week. So, um, on the older machines that does not have the CO2 monitor, it has an automatic choke. Well, a semi-automatic choke. You have to move the uh, choke lever over to the start position, start it up, and then it automatically moves that choke lever back to the run position. Uh, it's my understanding that the new machines did away with the um, uh, automatic choke uh, so they don't do that. So once it starts, you have to manually move it over. And there's a little problem with that, w with uh, tigging. And I don't know if it's because of that automatic choke or if it's just the way the machine does. But what it does is uh, when it's running, when it starts that tig, it goes up a little bit in the RPM and then it chokes down a little bit. So it kind of acts like, um, sort of like a, a, a pulse. It's almost like a pulse TIG on DC off the Outlaw. And uh, I'm really eager to find out uh, from somebody that tries this on the new machine that does not have the automatic choke, whether it does this or not. And speaking of the automatic choke, um, I discovered this from a couple of people that wrote to me and said that their choke doesn't automatically move back. Over by the starter, okay, if you've got the older machine that does not have the CO2 monitor on it, over by the starter is a little solenoid uh, that's connected by some rods and a long spring over to the choke lever that moves it over. And it's my understanding, I haven't actually looked at one of these new machines, but it's my understanding that when they came out with the new model that's got the um, CO2 model, uh, the uh, CO2 monitor, that they did away with that automatic choke. Um, so look at yours, let me know what you find out, because I know that the older machines that don't have it and I've verified this on three machines, uh, it does automatically move it over back over to the run position. And uh, I was reading in the owner's manual a couple of days ago for the new machine, trying to look at the differences. And even though the exploded diagram of the parts uh, shows the solenoid on there, I think they just copied those pages out of the older manual and put it in the newer manual instead of redrawing the diagram. But the new manual actually does say that uh, you move the choke lever over to start position, start it up, and then you have to manually move it back to the run position. So that's why uh, there's a little bit of a discrepancy there, but I'm waiting to hear back from the tech support people because uh, I wrote them a letter and I'm, I'm I'm digging into this so I can find out for you and I'll let you know on a later video. But we're gonna get started. And if you remember about a month ago, I made a video about how you can TIG weld off of a DC stick welding machine. And uh, if you remember that, if you watch that, uh, it's pretty easy setup. If you haven't watched it, at the end of this video, there'll be a little little box right here uh, that will take you straight to that video so that you can watch that video again. Uh, and it outlines everything that you need. But let me show you what I did. Okay, so what I did was I just took two little pieces of some uh, inch, inch and a half square tube that I had. And this is the TIG that I did. Uh, let me see if I can get one that's not too reflective. That's the TIG that I did with the um, with the Outlaw. It's not too bad. 
but uh, uh, it does pulse. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the machine running. Uh, normally, I cut out the sound of the machine and add some music so you don't have to listen to it. But uh, I'm going. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave this running so that you can hear the machine pulse up and down in the speed while you see what it's doing uh, with the um, arc. Now, if you've ever tigged with a pulse tig, it's a little bit different and it's not going to be what you're used to. When you're sitting there going and, and your arc comes out, uh, that's when you make the puddle and then you're going to have to get used to when you can add, add your filler material in there as you go along. And, and with a little practice, you can do it, it's doable. Uh, pulse is kind of cool because it doesn't get your material so hot. And uh, that's what pulse is for, so that you can just do little bursts of, of heat uh, while you add your, your uh, filler material. But, uh, so again, this time I'm gonna leave the machine running so that you can hear it. I may reduce the volume a little bit so it's not too obnoxious but uh, um, I want you to hear what the machine's doing uh, while you're looking at, at what it's doing on the uh, piece that we're working on. Okay, so to do this, all we're gonna need is we're gonna need our uh, TIG torch with the valve on it. And uh, if you remember from my other video about TIGging with a uh, stick welder, all of that is explained in that video and again at the end of this video I'm going to put a box right here that will have a link to that video so that you can watch it again. So uh, we've got our TIG torch plugged into the negative outlet output and we've got our uh, ground clamp on the positive and then the only other thing that we need is we need to hook our gas up to a little argon bottle and uh, I am using a number five cup with a 332nd uh, blue 2% lanthanated tungsten and I've got my gas flow on about 12 to 15. Okay I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up I'm gonna go uh, start the machine uh, remember um, you have to turn the welding power to on and I'm gonna run it about 85 amps and make sure that you turn the arc force to zero. Um, you don't want uh, the arc force running while you're doing this. But uh, so let's get started.
Okay, so hopefully you, you heard and saw that um, when, um, uh, and, and by the way, this ax is a lift TIG, uh, so touch it to it and then bring it off and then it'll start to arc. And then uh, hopefully you heard the engine pulsing and uh, in between pulses or when it comes back on pulse is when I introduced the filler material and I just went along like that. But um, with enough practice, you can get used to this. This is just how, um, you know, TIG, um, uh, pulse TIG works. But let me get this cleaned up. Uh, it looks like I might have had a little bit too much heat on there. Um, but let me get this cleaned up and show it to you. Wow, that was pretty cool. Hopefully you could uh, hear the engine pulsing uh, and compare that to the pulse that uh, we were getting coming on the, uh, on the, off the tungsten. Um, but this is what it looks like. That's what it turned out looking like. Let me see if I can get it to where it's not a reflection on it. Anyway, that's not too bad. Um, you see, it's got a wide heat heat signature on here. I think I had a little bit too much uh, heat. I had it at about 78. And it probably should have been around, I don't know, 65. Uh, but looking inside the tube, I know you can't see that, but I do have full penetration in there. And uh, that's a good, strong TIG weld. And I don't know if you can see this. Uh, see how flat it is? That turned out pretty nice. But um, so yeah, with a little practice uh, doing TIG uh, off the Outlaw is um, very doable. Um, takes a little practice uh, doing it with it pulsing like that. But if you've ever done pulse TIG, it's pretty much the same thing. You just got to learn uh, the pattern, the spacing that it's doing, and know when to introduce uh, your uh, filler stick. But uh, it's doable, so uh, y'all give it a try. And, and again, at the end of the video, I'm gonna put a box right here that'll take you to that other video um where i'm i'm explaining everything that you need to tig weld off of a dc power inverter i mean inverter uh power supply meant for uh stick welding but um leave a comment down below uh let me know what you think let me know if there's anything else that you want to see i got another video coming up uh really soon here in the next couple of days that I'm going to go through the maintenance on these machines, um, whether you bought it used or um, brand new. There's a couple of different things that you need to do. You got break-ins. Uh, you probably want to get rid of that stock spark plug that it comes in and upgrade that. But uh, anyway, I got that video coming out here probably Tuesday, and. Um, Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I really appreciate every single one of y'all. And uh, leave a comment because you know I answer them. Thanks and have a great weekend.